the absurdity of Shakespeare's authorship, the illiterate merchant from Stratford. How is it possible that a global intellectual world can accept the absurdity of Shakespeare's authorship? 1. A grotesque intellectual failure. It stands as one of the most grotesque intellectual failures in the history of world literature. The absurdly persistent belief that a barely literate merchant and marginal actor from Stratford, William Shakespeare, could have authored the most sophisticated, profound and enduring body of work in the English language, if not in all world literature. 2. Never, ever, a single letter. With absolutely no letters, no manuscripts, no diary entries, nothing that ties him intellectually to his time, how could such a myth persist for almost half a millennium? The answer lies in a disturbing combination of intellectual laziness, myth-making, and a blatant disregard for rigorous scientific standards of historical evidence. The contradictions are glaring and breathtaking, yet generations of scholars have turned a blind eye, allowing this myth to flourish unchecked, defying reason and honest inquiry. 3. Shakespeare's Missing Legacy How can it be that this alleged universal genius has left behind nothing but mundane records of real estate transactions and lawsuits? This striking absence of any intellectual footprint is more than a curiosity. It defies reason. Where are the letters to patrons, the drafts of plays, the personal reflections, or the insights one might expect from someone supposedly so deeply immersed in the intellectual and artistic movements of his time. 4. Shakespeare's Invisible Genius Even more baffling, those who knew him, those closest to his supposed literary circle, very rarely referred to his alleged literary genius during his lifetime. There are no accounts of Shakespeare engaging in debates, no records of him attending court functions or being part of the learned circles of the era. How could a man allegedly responsible for some of the most erudite and complex works in the English language leave behind no trace of an intellectual, artistic or social life? 5. Businessman or literary titan. Instead, the scant records we have of Shakespeare reflect a businessman, a property owner and someone entangled in petty lawsuits, hardly the profile of a literary titan. The profound silence from his contemporaries about his supposed authorship, combined with the lack of any personal writings or manuscripts, requires a more rigorous examination into a fully justified authorship question. 6. A mask for the true author. Shakespeare, the businessman from Stratford, was nothing more than a convenient front for the true playwright genius Marlowe. Marlowe who left behind the kind of documentary evidence that aligns with the production of such monumental works? The lack of evidence forces us that we seriously reconsider the traditional narrative. 7. The Enduring Myth of the Stratford Man's Authorship Yet despite these glaring gaps in the record, the intellectual world has, for centuries, accepted the absurd notion that this man, who likely had limited education and no exposure to the sophisticated court life or the political intrigue that saturates the Shakespearean plays, somehow possessed the erudition and deep psychological insight necessary to craft them. The contradictions are manifold and endless and yet they are rarely questioned in any serious scholarly manner. 8. Enigmatic expertise. A scholar without schooling. Shakespeare, unlike contemporaries as Christopher Marlowe, never attended university. Yet his plays reveal an astonishing grasp of law, medicine, foreign languages, politics and history. How did he come by such expertise, especially when university education was a hallmark of the writers of his time? It's as if we're being asked to believe that a small-town merchant magically absorbed the knowledge of a scholar, physician, lawyer and historian all without a trace of formal study. Nine, an absurd gaping letter hole. Not a single letter, not a single manuscript, 
no notes in his own handwriting, nothing. For a man supposedly at the center of London's literary scene, this is strange beyond reason. Imagine a major modern author, say J.K. Rowling or Ernest Hemingway, dying and leaving behind not a single personal document or letter. For Shakespeare, a figure of such claimed importance, this gaping hole is absurd. Why hasn't anything been found? The simplest explanation? He didn't write them. 10. Shakespeare, the uncelebrated genius. During Shakespeare's life, he wasn't celebrated as a literary giant. The great writers of his day, like Johnson, Spencer and Marlowe, were frequently praised by their contemporaries, but Shakespeare was largely ignored. How could the greatest writer in history be overlooked, while lesser-known figures received acclaim? It's only after his death that Shakespeare's reputation mysteriously exploded. If his works were truly so magnificent, why didn't anyone in his own time acknowledge it? 11. Shakespeare's duality, one playwright, or many. Shakespeare's early and late works are strikingly different in tone, vocabulary, and complexity. Some scholars have pointed out that it's almost as if two or more writers contributed to the plays attributed to him. Yet, instead of investigating this seriously, the literary world brushes it aside. The inconsistencies are so glaring and diverse that if we look at them objectively, they raise the obvious question. Was there a single author with multiple pseudonyms at work? Or multiple authors? 12. The Myth, A Fairy Tale of Natural Genius Despite all this, the myth stubbornly persists, bolstered by a romantic feel-good narrative that Shakespeare was a natural genius, who, like some kind of literary superhero, transcended his humble origins. This is the stuff of fairy tales, the charming notion that a barely educated man with no intellectual connections could somehow pull off the greatest literary feat in history. 13. Genius or illusion? It's a fantasy we love to believe. That sheer genius, unburdened by silly things like education or experience, can magically spring up from anywhere, even from a man more concerned with real estate deals than literature. But let's face it, this cosy story collapses like a house of cards the moment it's exposed to actual historical evidence. It's comforting, sure, but no more believable than a pig sprouting wings. 14. Shakespeare, a cultural cash cow. Why has this narrative gone unchallenged for so long? For one simple reason. It serves the interests of powerful institutions. Shakespeare isn't just a writer, he's a brand, a cultural cash cow whose name has become shorthand for literary greatness. Questioning the Stratford authorship isn't just heresy, it's a direct attack on centuries of academic tradition, multi-million dollar publishing empires, and an entire tourism industry that feeds off the myth of the bard. Imagine the chaos if people suddenly realised they'd been worshipping the wrong guy for centuries, there'd be broken quills from Stratford to the ivory towers of academia. 15. The Academy's untouchable Shakespearean dogma. And let's not forget that the Academy itself has been complicit in this farce. Instead of applying the same rigorous historical scrutiny they use for other figures, Shakespeare's authorship has been treated as untouchable dogma. Any time someone dares to point out the glaring contradictions, like a man with no education writing masterpieces about law, medicine and foreign politics, scholars swat them away like annoying flies, labelling them conspiracy theorists. Why engage with evidence when you can just ignore it and keep the Shakespeare industry alive? 16. Truth is optional. Myth versus reality. In the end, it's not about the truth. It's about keeping the legend intact, no matter how absurd it becomes. Academic reputations, tourism dollars, and publishing profits depend on it. So why let a little thing like facts get in the way? 17. Shattering Illusions 
the intellectual laziness surrounding this issue is, quite frankly, staggering. The refusal to apply even the most basic historical methodology to the Shakespeare question reveals more than just a blind spot. It exposes a deep discomfort within the academic community, a fear that if the Stratford myth collapses, it will take centuries of literary scholarship down with it. But here's the thing, that fear is utterly misplaced. Clinging to a convenient fiction isn't protecting intellectual integrity, it's undermining it. True intellectual rigor means following the evidence, even if it shatters the comfortable illusion we've been sold for generations. 18. The Stratford Illusion It's high time the academic world faces the uncomfortable truth. William Shakespeare of Stratford was not the author of the works attributed to him. The evidence, or more accurately, the sheer lack of it, demands that we stop pretending. It's absurd that we continue to credit a man with no education, no literary footprint, and no documented involvement in intellectual life with the creation of these masterpieces. Nineteen, rethinking the Bard. More plausible candidates like Christopher Marlowe, who not only had the education and political connections, but also the literary sophistication to write these works, deserve serious reconsideration. Let's stop living in denial and face the reality. The Stratford myth is just that, a myth. It's time to put it to rest and follow the evidence, even if it means rewriting a few textbooks. 20. Failure of imagination. In the end, the endurance of the Stratford myth isn't just a failure of scholarship. It's a profound failure of imagination. It reflects a stubborn refusal to even entertain the possibility that we've been wrong about one of the greatest figures in literary history. For centuries, the grotesque contradictions surrounding Shakespeare's authorship have been conveniently brushed aside, with scholars sleepwalking through the debate, rather than confronting the glaring inconsistencies. 21. Wake up to the truth. Dismantling the fragile myth. Questions long overdue intellectual slumber, time to awaken. It's time for the world to wake up from this intellectual slumber and finally ask the questions that should have been asked centuries ago. Why have we clung to a myth so fragile that it collapses the moment you hold it up to historical scrutiny? If we truly value the pursuit of truth, we must be willing to dismantle the convenient fictions that have shielded the Stratford myth from real examination. 22. Shattering convenient fictions, myth under scrutiny, truth demands examination, the fragility of belief. Only then can we begin to uncover the true story behind the creation of the greatest works in the English language. The sooner we confront this, the sooner we can rewrite the narrative and perhaps give credit to those who truly deserve it rather than perpetuating this absurd fantasy.